Hi, I'm Steve Hodges. Please call me Steve. And this is a orientation video for my summer online parole programming class. Maybe you've seen this recent article. Test shows 99.99% of high school seniors can't read Perl. Recent results from the standardized Perl fluency test show that 99.99% of U.S. high school seniors can't read Perl. This disturbing statistic shows that American students are painfully unprepared for life after graduation. Perl experts were astounded by the results. I was amazed that none of the students were able to read this simple sentence. I mean, come on, that's so easy, says Paul Chen, chairman of the Learn Perl or Die Association, which administered the test nationwide. All right, there. Yep. Pro programs can't actually look like this. Uh, hopefully the ones that we write this semester won't be quite this bad. There you go, Pearl. There's your first look at Pearl. <laughs> All right, if you decide to stay enrolled in this class, let's uh, take a look at some Pearl that's perhaps not so extreme. This class is uh, centered around the uh, textbook, uh, Learning Pearl uh, from uh, O'Reilly and Associates. It's one of my very favorite um, computer uh, um, texts. Uh, currently, it's in its uh, sixth edition, so that's the one that we'll be using for this class. Um, you could probably read this book without knowing any programming, and, and some folks try and do that and, and are perhaps not quite as happy with the textbook. Um, I really think this, this textbook is pitched at someone who has had some programming experience, so the prerequisite for this course is one semester of previous programming experience in either C++ or Java. And then I think this is a great textbook and you'll find that the difficulty isn't too much um, and that you have a, a pretty positive experience. Recommended preparation for this class is at least one semester of familiarity with the Flintstones cartoon. When you're using this uh, textbook, the first uh, chapter is an introduction and overview, so if you find that it goes a little bit fast, don't worry. Um, chapter 2 is kind of where the uh, basic uh, material begins. So that's kind of the uh, uh, main portion of this class. In some ways, this class is like a book club. We're going to read the chapters together, work on the exercises, discuss, and then I'll have you know programming assignments that um, you can do using the new material that you've learned. The design of this class, uh, we're going to have uh, approximately uh, seven programming assignments plus an extra credit assignment. And the idea is that you could do those programs now knowing just what you already know in C++ or Java. And you can use Perl as if it was a C++ or Java-like language and solve those programs uh, using Perl um, in the style that you already know from C++ or Java. As you work through the uh, Perl material, you'll learn some uh, techniques and commands that are specific to Perl that will make solving the programs easier. The pace of the programs matches up the textbook chapters so that you'll learn new techniques and commands uh, before that you have to uh, put them into use in the uh, programming assignments. Uh, each of the programming assignments has a specific due date and once they're collected I'll post at least one sample solution. I'll encourage you to post your solutions and then we can discuss um, them before we move on to the um, next assignment. One of the nice things about the Perl language is how lightweight it can be. So from the moment you have an idea of a program that you want to write the um, time it takes to get that first program written and running is, is very low. In my core computer science classes, I can stress and emphasize the, the uh, importance of planning your program before you begin working on it. In this class, I think it's very appropriate and fun to have a different emphasis, and that is to begin programming process by opening your text editor and starting to write the program. And you write it, and then you're done with it, and then it works, and then you move on. And it's certainly appropriate for um, you to code some programs that way. Certainly not all programs, and not even most programs. But it's nice to have a uh, different a workflow when, uh, when 
that's appropriate. And I think Perl is a, is a good programming language for that. Perl is a scripting programming language, and that means that your program text, your source code, is the also the kind of the final executing program. Um, so we don't have a separate compilation step. Uh, the Perl param is interpreted, which means that at the time that you invoke it or run it, um, that's when it's normally uh, compiled and, and run. All right, let's take a look at the course uh, website. The uh, website for the course is housed at pengo.cabrillo.edu slash Moodle. I think I've sent you a link to that. And this is us here. And uh, I've already sent you information about your account name and password. If you um, uh, aren't able to log in, uh, please contact me directly through email. Um, this link here that says forgot your username or password isn't, isn't set up. And uh, here we are at the course. It has an area for us to have some discussion and then calendar and a course documents. So we see these links here. Um, starting at the top is a link to the class discussion forum. We'll take a look at that in a moment. Then we have a link to uh, course documents, uh, including a two-part uh, syllabus. Take a look at that. A uh, worksheet for calculating your grade. Shows how your grade is calculated in the class. Um, we have a series of programs, uh, a final exam, lab practical. Um, that'll be uh, an open book exam that we're going to take later in the uh, semester. It's basically a programming assignment that's uh, timed. And then there's some points uh, reserved for uh, class participation. Uh, there's some uh, miscellaneous and, and fun things in here um, that you might or might not need. Um, we'll talk about simple, simple Unix databases later in the semester. And if you are um, using Windows, you'll need an SSH client. The one I recommend is PuTTY, and I have got a brief guide to using that. Um, you can get PuTTY if you Google PuTTY download. Um, you should find this page, and you can get this SSH client there. Okay, um, I've uploaded uh, the text of the programming assignments. They're all there and all ready to go, starting with the first param, which is due fairly soon from the start of the semester. It's basically hello world, uh, so it's a test to make sure that you can log in, uh, connect, write programs, and so on. There's a one twist to this. In this program, um, instead of printing hello world on the screen, I would like it to print out your name and email address. Um, each of the assignments will uh, have a description of what I would like you to do in the assignment and then a uh, grading rubric so you can see how the points for that um, assignment is divided up. One of the things that's very important in coding your programs is to get the uh, file name uh, exactly correct. Perl and Unix are both case sensitive, so here the uh, pro your first param needs to be called howdy, H-O-W-D-Y, exactly howdy in lowercase, no extensions, or anything else. Uh, Perl programs do not have a standard extension, and we will not be using any extensions as part of our file names this semester. Um, we've got um, links to various uh, tutorials and references. Um, depending on your background, you may not need any of these at all during this semester, or you may need to spend quite a bit of time um, working through these um, at the start of the semester. That will depend on how much time you've spent programming at the uh, command line uh, in, in the past. Let's take a look at the class discussion forum. And one thing I'd like you to do early in the week is to uh, respond to the please say hello post. I see that several of you already have. Thank you. That's great that you've gotten started. Um, please update your uh, profile so that um, some kind of recognizable photograph or uh, avatar image, um, if you really don't like having your uh, picture published, uh, some representational avatar is okay also. You'll get the default image until, until you do that. Once you update your profile, um, that will pop in in all, all of your discussion posts. And you can um, reply, uh, I'm... I can uh, edit and uh, modify posts. You won't have all of the same permissions, obviously, that I'm seeing right here right now. If you have um, any uh, questions, this is the best place to ask them. Just click Add a New Discussion Topic, and you can start a new post. 
Uh, appropriate things for discussion are any uh, Perl commands, um, uh, questions from the chapters that we're reading, questions uh, about uh, the exercises at the end of the chapters, um, which I'd like you to, to uh, um, work on. Or if you have questions about the specification of one of the programming assignments. So if you have a question about what I'm asking you to do, then uh, please uh, post for clarification. The only thing that you're not allowed to post is for help with the actual assignments. So the idea is that we'll read the book together, we'll do the exercises together, but then the programming assignments you have to do on your own. The expectation in this class is that when you turn in one of the programming assignments or when you complete one of them, that is entirely your own original uh, work and not the work of others. Once the assignment is due and collected, then I'll post a discussion. And at that point, it's uh, open season on the params. And I would encourage you to post your program, and then we can discuss and review them uh, you know, together. Um, but before the assignment's due, um, I'll, I'll ask you not to post for help about a specific assignment. In the uh, Moodle site here, we can um, you'll see an overview of uh, upcoming events. Those are in the uh, calendar. Click on any one of them. You should be taken to the calendar. There's also a link here, go to calendar. What you can see in the calendar is um, I've listed off the various chapters. That is a, an approximate guide of when you should be um, reading that chapter in the textbook. So here we see for this particular um, entry here, for Friday the 17th that you should be kind of working um, through uh, chapter 3. And you can see that's also when the first programming assignment is due. Uh, each of the programming assignments is due at 7 p.m. on the day that it's due, not midnight, 7 p.m. and um, each of the due dates of those assignments are here um, in the calendar. So you can see that those um, when those um, are, are coming up. If you have any questions about using um, the course website, um, you can uh, uh, post in the discussion form, or if you're having problems even doing that, you can email me um, directly, and, um, and I should be able to help you, uh, help you with that. Let's uh, finish off this uh, orientation by writing just a couple of brief Perl programs. I'm going to open up a terminal window. If you are on Linux or OS X, you will have an SSH client built in and you will be able to just connect from the command line. Let me make this text here nice and large. And if you are on Windows, then you'll need an SSH client like PuTTY that I mentioned before. I want to connect on port 2299, and my, my username is steveh at pango.cabrio.edu, and it'll prompt me for my password. Enter. Okay. Um, and when you connect, uh, you'll get a banner uh, greeting of some kind. During the semester, six, six weeks uh, for this class, I probably won't be keeping that uh, up, up very updated. So, you know, announcements and things like that you'll see in the Moodle uh, course website, not, not here. I do have a reminder here to change your initial um, password. Uh, for your uh, shell login. Please do that soon. You don't have to do that the very first time you log in, but do that before you s start in earnest uh, programming on the first assignment. Uh, the Moodle login and the shell login are different accounts with the same name, so if you change the password on one, it doesn't change the password on the other, so you'll want to change those um, independently. To change your shell password, use the password command PASS WD, and it'll prompt you for your current password and then a new one. I won't actually um, change my password right now. Let's write our first Perl program. I'm going to be using the Emacs text editor in the class, and we'll talk a little bit about it during the semester. If you haven't ever used the Emacs text editor before, we have some um, references. The uh, And I'll tell you in today's orientation the two most important commands for you to know. Okay. I'm going to type out Emacs Hello World, and the best way to use the Emacs text editor is with a file name, and if that file already exists, it'll load in and you can edit it, otherwise you'll begin editing a new file. So I'm going to create a file called Hello World, that's going to be my Perl program, and remember Perl params don't have any extension. And we'll start off here with a uh, pound sign, 
or sharp, and the pound sign is the comet character in both Unix and in Perl. Pound exclamation point or bang slash user bin Perl. Okay, so this is the first line of all Perl programs. All Perl params have a line that looks something like that. That must be the very first line in your program. If it's not the first line, your param will not work at all. It doesn't matter what comes before that. Anything that comes before that will make your program not work. So get rid of that. And this has got to be the first line. What does this mean? Well, the pound sign means that it's a comment. The exclamation point means it's a special command hidden inside of the comment, and slash user bin Perl is the location, the default location of where Perl is installed on the system. What happens is we're going to mark this file once we're done uh, writing it as an executable file. Then when we run it, the operating system is going to take a look at that first line, and it's going to see the comment character and say, oh, I ignore this line. But then it goes ahead and looks at the second character and sees the exclamation point and says, oh, this is a special line, and then it reads the rest, sees that it's a Perl program, takes the rest of the program, um, and then passes it to Perl to be executed. So that's what kind of makes your Perl program run. So it's important to get that line right. Pound, bang, slash, user, bin, Perl, all written together, no spaces. Okay, now let's write our program. And you might be saying, where are the classes if you're from Java? Or where are the functions? Where's main? Well, we will be dealing with functions, or also known as subroutines, later in the semester. But a basic Perl program can just be a series of commands. And they will execute one after another. OK. Now, if you're new to Emacs, you can see that I've been using the arrow keys and enter to type my commands. And you can see I've done some other things. The most important things to know are save, which is control X, control S. Here, I'll put a comment there. Control X followed by control S is save. And the second most important command to know is control X, control C is quit. Okay, so I've, let's do save, control X, control S. And you can see down here, it tells me it saved the programs. Also, the asterisks disappeared. The asterisks tell you that you've made changes since the last time you've saved. And let me go ahead and quit Control X, Control C. OK, now I have a text file. Now I need to mark it as executable, so the operating system will attempt to execute it as if it was a program. I'll do that with the schmod command, which is short for change mode. I'm going to set my program to 700. And, um, oh, I spelled that wrong. Hello, word. OK, well, you have to get the file name exactly correct. All right, so I've set the permissions on that file to 700. And that means that um, I have um, read and write access and execute access to that file. And at this point, now we can invoke it just by its file name, hello word. OK. Now, um, here we can see the program has um, run. And we see its output, hello word, world. And um, here we can see the prompt is run into the output of the program. That's pretty bad. Um, so that means I output not a complete line of text. All right, let's edit that file and fix that. So here inside print, we can add a new line. I'll save it again, and we can run the param again. And there we can see there's the output is quite a bit nicer. Let's talk about some of the things that make Perl weird. Now, in just a short introduction video, I'm not going to be able to go through all of the things that make Perl weird, but I think I want to point out a few of the key things that you should know. And the first thing is that in Perl, some things that are mandatory in other languages are optional. For example, in both C++ and Java, we know that parentheses always are used with functions and that they surround the parameters to that function. 
in, in Perl? No, not true. Let's get rid of the parentheses there and the parentheses there. I'll save, run the program again. Notice because it doesn't get compiled, there's no compilation step. I just make my change and then I run the program again. Notice it runs just fine. Okay. Let's add a variable to the program. We'll learn more about variables um, later in the semester. And except for the fact that the variable name looks weird, this is a line that we could code in C++ or Java. And so let's try running this now. And notice here it says syntax error backslash hello word line six and so here we can see this is the kind of error message that we'll get when we run the program. You'll get more error messages when you run the program and that you, um, because obviously there's not, there's not a compilation step that you know, picks out some of those syntax errors for you. Okay, so what's the problem here? The problem is that I left off the curly braces. When you have control structures like if or loops, you know, for and while and so on, in C++ or Java, the braces are optional, but they're mandatory in Perl. And here you can see now that's um, running. And here I'll change that to 101 and run again. And now you can see this time it did give the output because that condition is true. So they're working kind of like you would expect. All right, let's write one last program. while diamond print and we'll run this program and what is it doing it doesn't appear to be doing anything this is a stupid program stop copying me all right so here we have a program that's echoing its uh, input back to output here I'll do control D for end of file and notice the param uh, uh, ends. So here we've written a param that reads in an unspecified number of lines of text and then echoes them back out. How is that possible? Where is the code that makes that happen? This is one of the things that um, we're going to notice in Perl. In addition to the, the more operators that we're going to be using than perhaps we're used to in Java and C++, you saw that uh, funny sample program from the uh, humor website bbspot. Um, early in the orientation. At the time that was printed, by the way, that was a legal Perl program, entirely legal. I don't know if it still works with the, um, the uh, current version of, of Perl. If you try it out, um, let, me, let me know. So in addition to the use of symbols, Perl has all kinds of strange shortcuts. I'm very glad that you've got the textbook to go through because it's much harder to look at a Perl program and kind of intuit what it's doing because part of what it's doing is left out. So let's take a look at this program. While we can see it's a loop, it's going to repeat something. And we know just based on uh, computer programming that this must be doing some kind of input and this is doing some kind of output. Well, the diamond operator in Perl is uh, an input operator. We can see it's inputting a line of text. Where is it going? It's going to the default variable. Here we have a print command. Notice we're not printing anything. Why would you want to do print and not print anything? So if you say print without saying what you want to print, it prints the default variable. So unless you knew that Perl has this default variable system, it makes looking at Perl params difficult. On the other hand, notice how easy that was to run and think about what it would take in C++ or Java to write a program that reads an unspecified number of lines of text and echoes them back out. Not a not a lot, but maybe that's eight or ten lines of code. And here it's, you know, three or four, depending on how, how you count them exactly. This is kind of the nice thing about Perl. If you have an idea, if you have a problem that you need to solve, it's simple, and you just write the program, and it solves the program, and then you're done. That's kind of what makes Perl uh, fun and different. And hopefully throughout the semester we'll see that as we um, write programs that are sometimes quite small, um, for um, what, what they do. All right, well, I very much look forward to uh, working with you this semester to learn Perl, and um, I'll see you online. Thank you.